Welcome to another Final Cut Pro tutorial. In this tutorial we're going to have a brief overview of the transform crop and motion editors that are actually built right into the viewer here, here and here. So uh, without uh, further delay let's get started straight away with the transform editor. So we've got a clip selected in the timeline. Um, by the way you'll also notice that I have the skimming turned off I find this a little bit frustrating um, when I want to get to a certain place. So I, for me, I, I prefer it off just because I'm a bit old school. I like Final Cut Pro 7, um, so this makes it a little bit more familiar for me. Whatever takes your fancy. Whatever floats your boat. Um, can't think of any others. If you can think of another analogy, uh, post it in the comments below. So we've got our clip selected, and it's actually very simple we can just press this button, this is going to activate the motion editors and you can see that from here we can drag our corners we can drag um, from either one of the sides and that will allow us to distort the aspect as opposed to just the scale from the corners we can reposition it with the center you can also reposition from these I believe from the corners like that and then this handle here is rotate, kind of like in a Microsoft Word. And then you can hold down Shift um, to snap to specific angles. I believe it's 45 degrees, 90s, and uh, back to how it was. And the cool thing about these features is that one, it's really interactive, and second, we can actually add keyframes. So up here is a button that allows us to add a keyframe. We can just click that button there. Then we can travel forward in time, add another keyframe, and move the shot over to here. And you can see this red line has been drawn, and that's letting us know that we're actually creating some kind of movement. So when we scrub back through, you can see we've now created some kind of movement. What we can even do is go even further, add another keyframe, and scale the shot up. And now, this shot changes scale and position. This is cool. Um, it's probably not what you want to do, but uh, that is how it works. You can turn off the tools here, but it is going to remember your transformations. If you want to turn off what you've done, just head over into the inspector. And you can see that our transform tool is here. We can turn that off and that will revert us back to how it is. But what's cool is that it's actually going to remember everything we've done. So if we want to actually turn it back on, we can just check this box in. And everything we did has been remembered. And the other tools actually work the same. So let's go to the next step and uh, try out the crop tool. So we grab the crop tool now, and this actually works um, in a similar way in the sense that we can grab the corner and then we can do two sides at once, or we can just do a single side. Then we're going to crop it to the middle. like that. And one of my favourite things about this feature is just think of the possibilities. Okay, let's uh, let's set a keyframe here and then let's go to the first frame and set another keyframe and revert it to its original. Then let's uh, grab this clip. Actually no Let's not grab this clip. Let's grab another clip and put it over the top. And disable this layer so that we can see the layer below. We can just hit V uh, to where it cut trims. So it stops about there. And then let's cut this layer down to here. Let's turn this layer back on. Hit V again. Ah, I can't find it. Enable. There we go. And because our crop tool is still activated, we can now apply the crop to this layer. And very quickly, we are now starting to layer the clips up. And because of the magnetic timeline, if we were to grab this clip, and move it in between, you can see that these clips are always going to stay together. So if it cuts in, 
yellow clip comes in, and then let's throw in a third clip. Wow, we're going, we're, we're crazy today. Uh, let's shorten the duration. To uh, there. I think the curved edges certainly removes a lack of um, specificity. Spec it gives you less control the way Final Cut wants you to work it wants you to grab clips, throw them into the timeline and then play around with them in there with the uh, precision editor which is fine, but some people like to be precise in their media browser so it depends how you like to work and then with this third clip, obviously we've still got our crop tool enabled we can come in and crop this down to here so you know all the cool music that music videos that are really in fashion at the moment well this this is why you want to use it this is the, exactly the kind of a scenario in which this would be cool I mean look how quickly we've created something that looks pretty cool it's fluid and we've got some nice kind of like borders going on in fact what we can even do is go into the uh, move tool move it over so that the center's there and then go back to the crop tool oh, sorry we're going to have to uh, move it central first if we uh, take Vinicius on the bench and then grab the move tool very quickly. Look at that. Well, we weren't actually doing anything yes. But obviously there was some horrible audio there that we just decreased the sound levels down. If you check out the tutorial for working with sound in Final Cut Pro on my channel, uh, youtube.com forward slash dan on a bouncy castle or youtube.danallenfilms.com takes me you right to my YouTube page. So you can see here the kind of effects that you can create really quickly. So if you're one of the musician artists, um, you can see there's loads of flexibility to layer up all your audio tracks and some, cut some pretty cool music videos. I mean, if you are a YouTube user, I honestly cannot think of a better program. I cannot advise a better program than Final Cut Pro 10. Um, and I, I am being honest that this is what it was made for. It uh, very much is. So with this in mind, let's uh, just grab this clip and throw it back to here and then introduce ourselves to the final manipulator, which is the distort effect, also known as, well, it was known as motion. I don't know. And so we click on that to activate it, as you do with any other effect. And the way this works is that you can grab the corners and that uh, distorts diagonally and then you can move it around it's kind of like a corner pin effect, I think that's the best way to look at it if you're familiar with uh, other visual effects programs and you can also use the, uh, the sides to skew it for instance if we just command it back to the original you can notice that that really is a skew effect but obviously you can move it up and down as well. If you hold down shift, you can limit yourself to one direction. Not the group one direction, but actually one uh, axis of movement. It's probably a cleverer way to say it. And just like anything else, it's keyframeable. So let's add a keyframe. Let's go back to the first frame. Let's throw that up there. And maybe what we need to do, we need to zoom into our timeline, not our view. We just click up here and go back to fit. Make sure our timeline is selected and then zoom in today. Let's just ensure that all of these line up with the edit point. What we can even do is select all three clips. 
go over to our transitions and add cost event to the loop. And now when we play it back, you can see the skew is applied over the duration of the shot. So very quickly we've introduced ourselves to these tools and like with all of these tools, if we go into our inspector you can see that we can actually turn off all of these. We've got the clock tool and the distort tool. If we turn off distort you can see it's back to how it was but it remembers the information we told it and I think that is very important in doing so. So I hope this tutorial was informative. I actually think this is one of the coolest things about the new Final Cut, the ability to very quickly manipulate your footage. Uh, my favourite is the crop tool, um, similar to a garbage map in most other applications, but quicker. If this is the kind of thing you want to do, like I said, there is nothing better. And you can see that the effects we applied do need to be rendered. If we press Command 9, you can see our background renderer. And that is just working away perfectly. Look at that. Fly through. And we're done. And now all our clips are real time.